Hey everyone, and welcome back to Suited Aces Poker, where every week we scour YouTube to bring you 10 of the best poker hands from poker vloggers everywhere. And in this week's episode, we've got a new vlogger to feature. We've got a hand that shows you just how to win with seven high. And we have in the number one spot a hand that you are not going to want to miss. If you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe. It really does help out the channel a whole bunch. But without further ado, let's make a start. At number 10 this week, and Wolfgang Poker is playing at the Players Casino in Ventura, California. He's in a 2-3 cash game, and it's just never easy getting away from a straight flush draw. I look down at 6-7 of diamonds. I have 1,200 in my stack. I'm in middle position, and the player on my right raises it up to $25. 6-7 of diamonds could get cooler in a flush over flush situation, but it just has a lot of playability on a lot of boards, some straight draws, flush draws. So for that reason, I decided to put in the call, and two others do as well. We're off to a flop, which still gives us 7 high, but a lot of hope. It comes 8-5 deuce. Bang! We flop ourselves an open-ended straight flush draw. Pretty gnarly situation. The small blind now rips it all in for $65. Great news for us. Under the Gun puts in the call as well. There's a lot of people interested in this hand. I still just have 7 high though. So I don't really know if I want to play for 65 bucks. There's two ways to go about it here. Do we just call and a 9 of diamonds or 4 of diamonds peels off on the turn? We could cooler someone in a flush over flush situation. Or do we play this one aggressively and make a re-raise here to like $165? By raising, it might get a hand like 8-9 to fold, something that has equity and has us beat at the moment. I decide to go for that route and try to get money in here. Under the Gun also has a good amount of chips in his stack. I make it $165. Expecting him to fold out a lot of his hands he was just drawing with, but not expecting him to fold any of his strong ones. So when he puts in the call, we're interested to see what comes off on the turn, which doesn't change anything. It comes with three of clubs, and sure enough, he checks it over to me. Right, you guys, I'm interested to see what you do down in the comments. Pause this video and let me know what you guys would do here on this turn. Facing a check from under the gun, here's around 530 in his stack. Would you guys A, decide to check behind here and take a free card? Would you B, go for like a half pot size bet of $200? Or would you C, rip it all in for $530 effective, putting max pressure on the opponent? Take a second and let me know what you guys would do in this situation. Leave a comment down below and let's see what I decided to do. When he checks it over to me, I look at his stack. He has around $530 in his stack. There's $475 in the middle. I could go for a half pot size bet here of around $200, looking to jam most rivers even if we don't hit our hand. That's what I like to do. Two stacks of yellow going into the middle and uh, he postures himself for about 15 seconds before sliding all of his remaining chips into the middle. It's a $532 check raise all in and we're in an interesting spot here. Obviously, I have the straight flush draw. I can't be betting $200 and folding for $300 more, so I make the snap call, but what is he really representing with this raise? He might have a set like fives, eights, or deuces. Looking for a diamond, a nine, a four, or a combination of the bows on the river to feel better about my hand, which is exactly what we get. It comes the deuce of diamonds. Bang! We river the flush. I say bang, but I was a little preemptive in my notion there. Under the gun turns over ace four of diamonds, so he had the nut flush draw. We were only drawing to two diamonds. Any nine or four that was not a diamond, we would have won on, but uh, he's going to take down that massive pot to end the night with his nut flush. At number nine, Brad Owen is playing in a 5 10 20 cash game at the Lodge. And in this hand, Brad finds himself playing against Dr. Evil from Austin Powers in Austin, Texas. The very next hand, there's a double straddle on, and we raised to 200 of Pocket Kings and the Hijack. Doug's the one guilty of double straddling. Someone made the observation that it looks like he got today's wardrobe out of Dr. Evil's closet. I don't know, I think it looks nice. Although I'm in the hijack, I was second to act pre-flop and a raise from that position should be taken seriously and treated with respect. Doug's aware that my range will be narrow. He correctly chooses to call rather than four bet. I don't suspect that he's nearly as strong as he is. We're heads up in position. Doug smashes the flop as it comes ace, ace, jack, rainbow. I actually don't mind it, figuring that this flop crushes my range and it isn't gonna always connect with Doug's cards. Doug checks immediately. I bet 100 to try and keep him in with hands that are drawing slim, like smaller pocket pairs. I actually expect him to fold pretty often, even to a bet this small, since I can have combos consisting of quads, trips, and boats. The small sizing somewhat freezes Doug. Obviously, he can go with a check raise, but he doesn't want to blow me off my hand when he's as strong as he is. He just flats to ensure that I remain in. 
Once he calls, I start to become concerned. His worst hand might be something like 10-9 with a backdoor flush draw or something, but I have pocket kings, making it less likely that he'll have a straight draw with king-queen or king-10. It's also less likely that he'll have king-jack. I'm worried that I could be up against trip aces, but hopefully I'm only up against a pair of jacks. The turn is the three of diamonds, it's a blank, Doug checks again. I immediately check back because my girlfriend in high school cheated on me and now I'm suspicious of everyone. The river is the six of diamonds, it's another blank, Doug knows that I have a river calling problem, it's rare to flop trips, he wants to get maximum value so he overbets pot and fires for 900. If my cards were face up, he'd probably bet the same amount anticipating a call. I have about the best hand that I'd ever play this way so if I'm regularly folding in these spots, Doug can easily exploit me. I'm just having a hard time figuring out what he'd be bluffing with unless he got real creative by turning a small pocket pair or queen 10 into a bluff. To be honest, I wouldn't be super surprised if he folded those on the flop since, as you can see, sometimes queen 10 will essentially be drawing dead. Small pocket pairs have some value so they don't 100% need to be turned into bluffs. I don't think Doug would turn a jack into a bluff or bet that much for value with one either. It's a tough decision for me because if any one of the tables capable of finding some unique hands to bluff with, it's certainly Doug. It's just not that large of a pot relative to the game that we're playing. I fold face up at the risk of looking like an idiot. You can see that I'm not sure about it as I'm shaking my head and wincing. Doug relieves some of my angst as he reveals that he has trip aces. I'm incorrectly imagining that he probably had a small or medium kicker to go with it. He keeps his queen face down as he stacks his chips. I'm glad to have escaped that death trap, losing only $100 post flop. At number eight, and Mariano is at the Hustler in California. He's playing in a 50, 100, 200 cash game. And tell us in the comments, what would your move be on the river if you were in Mariano's shoes? There's a limp from the cutoff before a suited Superman raises to $900 on the button. Action folds to me in the straddle and I look down at pocket kings. Definitely good enough to raise, so I make it 4,200 to go and only Superman makes the call. Heads up to an amazing flop of ace-king-5 with two spades. I continue with a small bet, and he calls. The turn is an offsuit 7. Looks good to me, so this time I bet $8,000. Looking back, I wish I would have gone a little bigger here, but anyway, he thinks it over for a while and makes the call again. So quite a big pot brewing now, and it seems we're up against a big ace or perhaps a flush draw. Fingers crossed for a good river card, and you won't believe it, we get the best one in the deck. Oh my god. Quads again. Suited makes the flush. That's right, we make four of a kind against a flush, and it's time to go for the max. If he's got an ace, he's probably going to fold, maybe not. If he's got a flush, he's definitely not going to fold. Well, these are the spots that poker dreams are made of. All in. All in. Mariano knows that Sudi made a flush. Gross. Really gross <clears throat> spot here. Against anyone else, this is a snap fold. But Mariano is very capable. Mariano, that was a little quick, really he, quick all in. It was. He's going to have bluffs yeah. with like everything he does. He knows the fold. Can he execute? Mariano's been executing all night. Can suited Superman as well. Yes, he can. Well done. Seat five. Well, maybe I should have said these are the spots that poker nightmares are made of because my opponent ends up making a ridiculous fold and completely owns my soul in the process. Number seven this week, and it's your boy Ethan, Rampage Poker, playing in a $250 tournament in St. Martin. He's at the Casino Royale. And how many cards are there with the same number again? Moving on to the next level, we pick up two cards that are the same number, pocket sevens and plus one with a small stack. I raise it up to 1200 here in this spot with about 20 big blinds to play for. We get the low jack to make the call, then the small blind goes all in for about 16,000. He obviously covers me and with my pair and short stack. There's no time to waste here. I'm snap calling this all in 
And surprisingly, the low jack player who called my 1200 makes the call as well. So not looking good, thinking that I'm dead here. But to my surprise, I'm up against ace king and ace queen. I am a favorite to win this hand right now. And when the flop comes a seven, that is going to seal the deal. Turn seven. Another seven for quads. Crazy to hit a full triple up in this spot. Although we started this tournament losing half of our chip stack, we end up tripling up and making quads. That's one way to have a highlight reel early on in this tournament. Number six this week and Kyle Fischel, official poker. We still think that's the best name for a poker vlog out there. Is at the Orange City Racing and Car Club in Orange City, Florida. He's playing in a 2-5 cash game, and in this hand, we're grateful for the public service announcement on string betting. With one limp, I'm on the button with King Queen of Hearts. I raise to $20. The limper is the only caller, so we are going heads up to a flop, where we flop a full house. When my opponent checks to me, having the entire board locked up and then some, I don't really see a way I can bet here and get much of anything to pay me off. So I'm definitely going to check this one back, hope to induce my opponent to throw out a bet on the turn card. Well, when the turn is a six of diamonds, and now there's two possible flush draws on board, kind of surprised to see my opponent check to me. But either way, we definitely have to go for some level of value. And he gets some amount of money when we flop a full house. So I bet $25, and I am happily surprised to see my opponent raise to $85. Still not even sure what exactly he can have, but happy to see it. I'm going to make the call and hopefully he can pile it in on the river. When the river is the nine of spades, my opponent stacks all his chips into a single pile besides the one and two dollar chips and then slides it into the middle and then tries to slide the ones and twos in the middle. Fortunately, it being a string bet, the ones and twos don't play. Turns out I'm greedy and I take no prisoners and his $150 bet I'm going to raise to about $180. I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse. My opponent hymns and haws and thinks about for a long time, keeps thinking it's super unlucky that I have ace queen, and I'm like, nope, don't have that. And my opponent eventually does make the call. Having trip queens with a 10 kicker does not beat the full house. It's definitely a cooler. I'm really happy to be on the right side of, and we take down another decent sized pot. Number five this week, and we have a new vlogger to Suited Aces Poker. This is Evan Stewart Paul. He is playing in a 2 3 cash game at the Horseshoe Casino in Baltimore, Maryland. And pay attention, folks, there is a lot to keep up with in this hand. Only a couple hands later, I'm on the button and look down at Ace Jack of Diamonds. There's a couple limps before it gets to me. I make it 15 a go, and we end up getting called by the small blind under the gun and middle position. We end up going to a flop four ways that comes ace, jack, eight, rainbow. We flop top two pair. Even better, under the gun, who's the same player from last hand, decides to lead out here for $25. Middle position calls the 25, and when it gets to me, I'm not going to make the mistake of slow playing my hand anymore. I make it 75 to go. But then when it gets over to the small blind, she does something very unexpected. She doesn't call and she doesn't fold, she goes all in, and she easily has me covered here. Under the gun folds, and now when it gets to middle position, something weird happens with him. He decides to try to call the 75, because he didn't realize the small blind went all in. It takes some time for the dealer to explain to him that the small blind went all in, and he can either go all in or fold himself. After a little bit of discussion, Middle position decides to go all in as well. His all in is for less, about 285 total. When it gets back to me, we really don't have much of a decision here. I'm not really worried about what middle position could have, and I haven't seen the small blind play too many hands, but she definitely seems capable of bluffing. If she has a hand like pocket eights here, so be it, but I'm just never folding. I decide to make the call, and after I make the call, I ask the small blind if she has pocket eights. And interestingly enough, she shakes her head no. So I'm not really sure what cards I need to avoid on the turn and river. But I'm not trying to slow roll anyone. I just show my hand. The turn comes the nine of clubs. And the river comes the eight of spades. The small blind is slow to show her hand. But eventually shows 
ace-king. Middle position ends up showing ace-five of hearts, so we're going to end up winning the biggest pot of my life. I cannot believe middle position went all in there as well, and as you're going to see, my hand was shaking trying to get a tip together for the dealer. I was in so much shock. Number four this week and close to broke is playing at the Commerce in California. He's in a 5-10 cash game. And if you've ever wondered how to win with seven high, wonder no more. And I find myself in the blind race for 20 bucks. Both the under the gun and the cutoff decide to limp the $20. The button decides to raise here to $85 as an isolation. Folds over to me in the straddle. We look down at seven three of clubs here. If I'm going to put in the blind raise and somebody only four exit, look, I'm only human. I've got to defend this. So I make the call. The two other limpers make the call as well. We're going four ways to a flop that is pretty miraculous as it comes jack six four with two clubs and a spade we flop ourselves a flush draw as well as a straight draw and a really big multi-way pot this is what dreams are made of we all check it over to the initial razor who decides to bet for 350 dollars what the heck is going on a massive c bet a ridiculously sized c bet you know all things considered look I mean, if that's the case, if he's betting the size of the pot, I just prefer to make the jam in here and see all the remaining cars that we can see. Both a turn in the river. And if I have a little bit of fold equity, maybe he has ace king or pocket tens. So I decide to jam in here for $1,510 exactly. Both the other two players make the fold. And now our opponent makes the tank. He goes deep into the tank here. I'm pretty kerfuffled because... When you bet the size of the pot and you get raised, sure, it's a little bit scary, but like, how are you not snap calling? How do you, how do you see bet four ways over the size of the pot and have a fold here? I don't know, but after quite a bit of tanking, two minutes, if I'm not mistaken, my opponent decides to make the fold. Great for us. Seven freaking high. All in is not fun, especially in the first hand that I play in this session, but... Shoot, I mean, I can't complain. The very first hand we sit down to play is a ridiculous one with seven high, but we'll take it. Number three this week, and Lexo is playing in a 10-25 cash game at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino in Hollywood, Florida. And hold tight, folks. This one gets a little bit nerve-wracking. We are now dealt in pocket aces on the button. Folds to me, I make it $75. A super loose, aggressive player in the small blind. He re-raises me to $325. Back over to me, he started the hand with $5,000 and I started the hand with a little over $5,000. Now, sometimes I could just flat call here, try to under my hand, but against this opponent who's super aggressive, I am not going to slow play here. I put in the four bet with pocket aces to $800 versus a very loose aggressive player who is three betting out of the small blind. He's going to have a ton of hands like 910 suited, king jack off suit, ace five suited, possibly eight nine of hearts. Some of those hands that will just fold to my four bet, but this time my opponent does not fold and he does not call either. He re-raises me. He five bets me to $1,800. Is this real life? We're sitting here with pocket aces. We raise on the button. Small blind three bets. We four bet. And he five bets us to $1,800 sitting in a 10-25 game. $5,000 deep. I don't think it gets much better than this. Now, of course, I don't think I'm ever going to be six bet jamming with anything but aces. So I think my only option here is to call. So that is what I do. So we're going heads up in position to a five bet pot with pocket aces. No king, no queen. Give us a safe board. The dealer gives us four, four, seven, two diamonds, a perfect flop. Five bet pots are very rare. So I expect my opponent to have kings and queens here, which is why we were looking to fade a king and a queen on the flop. It is possible he could have the other set of aces as well. He continues for $1,600 on this flop. And with about $2,000 left in his stack, I don't think he's ever folding here. So I decide to rip it all in before any scare card comes out. He makes a snap call. So we're all in here over $10,000 in the middle. We decide to run out the board one time. The turn is a king, one of the worst cards in the deck. Now we're losing a pocket kings if he has it. The river is an eight of diamonds. The flush gets there as well. I show pocket aces 
and he flashes pocket queens and mucks, and we take down over a $10,000 pot. Number two this week, and we're back with Rampage. Your boy Ethan, he's playing in an unknown location in a home game with $25.50, $100 blinds. Bet your cash games aren't that big. Bonus points on this hand if you can guess Ethan's opponent's hand before it gets announced. I have ace-queen offsuit with the $100 straddle on, and I raise it up to 300 The small blind makes the call, and the straddler of 100 puts in a raise to 1800 We're both playing super deep, and here for $1,800, I'm happy to battle in position with a good hand. I'm happy to see a flop. Small blind folds, and we're going to a flop of 10-9-8 rainbow. He starts with a check over to me now, and on a board texture that should favor me as the caller opposed to the three better, I decide to bet out $1,000 here. This isn't really like a bluff or a blocker bet or anything, just mainly like a range bet, I think. And for $1,000, he makes the call. So I guess I'm hoping to hit a jack to hit my gut shot straight draw. But when the turn is the deuce of diamonds, brings in two diamonds on board, he checks again. And I don't know what to do. Him calling this flop is suspicious of him having a strong hand here, as he certainly could. And uh, I don't know, ace-queen high, maybe we can hit a gutter, maybe we can hit a pair. I check back. The river is now the three of diamonds. And I don't know, not super relevant, but I do have the queen of diamonds to block some flushes. He checks for a third time, and as played, him checking three times, I think I'm just going to apply a lot of pressure and bluff off a bunch. I fire out $4,500 into the middle, and this player goes deep into the tank for a long time. About four to five minutes go by. He starts talking and says that he just might call, but would be afraid if I have him beat somehow. And I don't know what to think. Not sure what he has. Maybe just a one pair holding that he's thinking about for so long. And look, I think if he calls, like, ace queen high is not going to be good. He ends up tossing in a chip for a call. Oh no, I show my ace queen off suit and he insta mucks. Oh Jesus Christ, what is going on here? I got a tank hero call for $4,500 on the river and the opponent mucks and doesn't have ace queen high beats. Oh dear God, feeling like I got gifted almost $5,000 here on the river, feeling pretty happy about it. Later, asked this opponent what he had. He had ace jack high. So yeah, I guess I'm just lucky to be in the spots. Or let me actually scratch that. I soul read this player and I just knew he would call with ace jack high and went for max value. That's the story I'm going with. That's the script I'm going with and I'm sticking to it. And at number one this week, Andrew Nimi is playing at the Lodge in Austin, Texas. He's in a 5-10 cash game and... Well, I think it's best that we talk about this one after you've seen it. Caitlin opens the button here for $90 before DQ finds something he likes the looks of, making it $410 out of the big blind. Next to act, we look down at the second best hand ever created, and with a raise and a re-raise in front of us, and a bunch of momentum as of late. No way we're flatting and giving a good price to those behind us. There's a four back coming and we just need to figure out a size. It doesn't need to be the full 3x since it shouldn't be hard to threaten the full stack in a four bet pot, but I also think we can go for a reasonable amount of value. And if they happen to fold and we profit $500 without a flop, that's not the best but not the worst result either. I decide on a size of $1,100. Doug is out of the way and Caitlin, the initial raiser, can't continue here and folds too. Back to DQ who thinks it over briefly before deciding on a flat call. The two of us are off to a flop where I'm looking to dodge the overcard. Here's the flop. No, yes. Ooh, an ace and a king set for Andrew. Two pair for DQ. This is Danger Will Robinson. All chips are going in play this this hand. But if we can't dodge the overcard, then let's do this instead. DQ gives a bit of a speech about me re-raising pre-flop and then an ace and a king come on the flop before checking it over to me. And once again, I like a bet with my full range in this spot, typically for one quarter pot. So that's what I wager, $550, praying DQ has something he can continue with. It takes about nine seconds before DQ 
says those magic words. $550 bet. All in call. Oh my goodness. Andrew, Andrew's just about to double up here. That's why it's going to hurt. DQ looking for the ace of clubs. There's $14,000 in the middle. This is the second biggest pot I've ever played in my life. We were stuck early on, got into a big hole in this session. In fact, it's the most I've ever been stuck, but now we're on the momentum train and winning this pot would get us all the way back out. What's even better is that Doug folded the ace of hearts, so that leaves one single out to escape for DQ. Oh my goodness! Oh my goodness! The ace of clubs! The one outer! DQ! I don't believe what I just saw! One out. Stunned, folks. I just. I, I'm not. Where the Kings go? I'm speechless, folks. DQ thought he hit the world with two pairs, top two. Andrew waiting for him with a set. Needless to say, I, I, that was such a sick one outer. Yep, folks. That really happened. How does that happen? Andrew, it is amazing to us how you managed to hold such incredible composure as you slid your chips over to DQ. We felt for you on that one, man. Oh my goodness. Well, that's it, folks, for another week. Thank you so much for watching. We are edging closer and closer to 100 subscribers, which is a really big deal for us. The first 100 subscribers. If we get there, YouTube lets us have our own unique URL, which is very exciting. So if you haven't already, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Tell your friends, ask them to subscribe as well. We appreciate the support, we really do. We'll be back next week with another 10 of the best. But until then, good luck at the felt.